dream or flight Welcome to the Whiskey Roundtable. We are your hosts, Big G, Karen Helen Keller, Doug Dunbar. All right, kids. We're all fired up today. I just, up. I have to warn yeah. everybody. Um, yep. I don't know what happened. If I'd have known this, I wouldn't have wore underwear. But anyway, go ahead. You wore I mean, underwear? I did. Holy crap. It's on my head earlier. But anyway. <laughs> Nobody saw. Kind of a celebration of rye today. It was, a, is, kind yes, of going to yeah. be. <laughs> it's going to be. It's still early. It's only 730. <laughs> Oh my! Well, that was a nice uh, Confucius you posted on her. Did you like that Confucius? What yeah. did Confucius say? Confucius say, "Man who fart in car likes his own brand." <laughs> Something like that. Something like that. <laughs> there Oops. you go. That's not. Gee. <laughs> <laughs> just, just so y'all know, we have a. Full audience today, kids. Yeah, a lot of, lot of folks there. in the studio audience today. We got some Brooke Lottie being drunk and some George Who? Dickel. Brooke Lottie. That's her Jimmy's. Process. Who's a Brooke? Oh, Jimmy. Oh. Brooke Lottie. Where'd you get that Brooke Park? Brooke, Brooke Park. Brooke Park. <laughs> <laughs> got, uh, Way out on the west side. <laughs> Karen, Karen's got uh, her, some, Karen's some got her chicken, chicken cock, cock hanging yeah, out yeah. there. I do. Chicken. Jennifer Boggs, thank you. <laughs> Y'all yeah. miss that. But anyway. <laughs> I, I heard you. I just ignored you. you. Got Dickel Sour Mash, twelve year recipe. I see the Mictors over there. Got some Mictors rye. Mictors yeah. single barrel rye. Oh, the chicken cock is not rye, but I did have Dickel rye. Nice. Well, Dickel and cock. <laughs> you didn't read the memo. But is there a theme going on? I guess it was a double penetration. <laughs> awesome. That's awesome. Hope you send pictures. <laughs> Damn. Oh, you walk, my uh, gosh. So, Any who's it's. So, uh, you know, something we haven't done in a while. Um, I just want to throw, uh, I want us all to throw out, out a name. But, you know, we have a bunch of sponsors. So, I'd like to uh, name a few yeah, of those. Let's, be nice. Yeah, We haven't done it in a while. Of course, while. the Cleveland, we, really Bur we, we have them on our credits roll know, every week. Yeah. But uh, we'd like to also uh, mention them. Cleveland Bourbon Co-op, Royal Havana Cigars, Village Martini, Simply Greek, Low Imports, LLC, Rolling Smoke, Barbecue, Sagrin, Chagrin Valley Beverage, 21 Stakes, Staves, <laughs> North Coast Jazz Ensemble, and Rawhide Firearms are our new sponsor. Absolutely. And we had a lot of fun on Wednesday night. Yes, we did. At yes, the did. Royal Havana Cigars. Royal Havana oh, Cigars yeah. entertained us for, uh, I don't know, eight hours. It was, uh, <laughs> it was fun, man. It was fun. Oh, we need guys. to do that more often for Kurt's sure. Kurt's like, Greg, how late we stay? And I'm like, 45 minutes, we'll be home. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, uh, Doug, you captured a picture from that night out. Yeah, we got that up. So uh, I'm going to transition to that. I'm going to show that right now. So here we've got Dan, who was on our show. Dan Ruth, that's a picture in, in uh, Matt, Sosa, Matt Sosa, another uh, frequent uh, watcher of the show. Uh, been here in the audience a few times. Yep, yep. And, uh, yeah. Sweet. So how was everybody's week? Sucked. I'm glad it's over. I'm glad it's Friday. Hey, man. Glad it's Friday. How about how about you? Is this Friday? It better be. Or... Well, then I'm having a good time. Well, you're retired, so. I'm retarded, definitely. Can I say that word? <laughs> yes. Okay. All right. Oh, my brother's reaching out from Texas already. Again. All right. That's Steve. Right. Wait, did he, did he? No, he's not on tonight. He's not, he'll, he'll be on later. Okay. He's got something going on. So we got uh, Jennifer out there. Hey, Jennifer. She survived another week, she said. Yay. Uh, Pat Patterson, hola. Patty. Ah. With respect to last week, he is an enjoying, he's enjoying a Balvini. Nice. 14 year. 14, okay. Oh, nice. And a Heineken. The 14, oh, that's of course. A, it's the always... Caribbean cast, 14? Yeah, it, uh, Balvini, yeah. 14 is a Caribbean cast. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, Pat usually buys me one of those every Christmas. Yeah, but he's cheap now. He's working from home. Yeah. Well, money talks. Plus, he lives in Pittsburgh. Yeah. <laughs> money talks. Does he? Mine only ever no, says goodbye. But 
So I have to laugh because Matt is commenting on his picture and he said um, that he <laughs> he looks constipated. So let's let's throw that back up. Do you? Oh, you do. Yeah. You He's look like at... he looks like. Hurry up and snap that picture. <laughs> Where's the bathroom? Way Where's over the there, huh? Way over there. Huh? <laughs> I put my pants. What's that, man? <laughs> my pants. What? Uh, yeah, you do look a little constipated. Well, that's what happens when you hang out with this crowd, you yeah. know. Too funny. Lindsay. All right, Lindsay's Lindsay. out there. I'm going to make sure I don't miss miss all of the Dunbar kids because they, we right. kind of got uh, a little sass last week for, yeah, we for missing out. But mm -hmm. that's good. We deserve it. Jennifer mm -hmm. Boggs. She's already tipsy. She started with a J. Riddle peated bourbon. I've never oh, heard of that. Peated mm -hmm. bourbon. Okay, now there's hmm. there's something we need to probably cover in a future. Episode. I know it says peated, so you've got. No, I mean I know that there's. We talk about the <laughs> growing trend in American single malt, but I've never had a peated bourbon. So. You ever seen a grown man naked? <laughs> <laughs> Just she, she's also. This is why she's a little tipsy, because she also had a little stag junior. Oh, okay. And okay. now she's on old Ezra seven year. Girl, you're just making the rounds. That's all high wow. proof. Every bit of that is high proof. All, all over a hundred. Yeah, well, Jen doesn't mess around. Yeah, no, she, she doesn't. She, don't she knows that. what she's doing. She's a freak. <laughs> she just taught the liquor store clerk a thing or two. <laughs> Oh my goodness. So uh, tonight we are going to uh, taste and feature the Peerless Small Batch Rye. Uh, is it time? It's Let's do the bottle cam. Do a bottle time, time for a bottle, bottle, bottle cam. Hey everyone, it's time for the bottle cam. The bottle cam. <laughs> Because you should see him like every week when he he gets ready to do the don't, bottle cam. Don't, don't pull back the veil too much. Yeah, yeah leave it, leave but, it alone. No, I, can I just say it's like I mean the, he puts it in his own shoe. Yeah, <laughs> it's like the highlight. He, he's back there getting, he's doing it, he's filming it. He's got this big old smile on his face. He's just like, <laughs> gets all happy. <laughs> He's, so, he's going for different angles in the, in the next coming yeah. weeks, I saw. Uh, right so so, so we Wednesday, we Wednesday I'm at the office, I'm working, right, kind of, and uh, my phone goes off. It's like, I don't know, 10 o'clock in the morning, and we're, we're all getting together to go to Oral Havana Cigars in the evening. So I pick up the phone, my cell phone, and I click on it. There's Dick, or Dick, I'm sorry, there's there's Doug with uh, this picture. He's got this picture of a smile on his face. He's like this. <laughs> smiling. I'm like, oh, it's going to be one of those nights. I get it. Uh -huh. And it pretty much was. Yeah, well, it was 10 in the morning on a Wednesday. Yeah. <laughs> Mouthwash, right? What yeah, the, is, yeah. Is that wrong? Yeah, I yeah. don't know. I, I had a you know, sore. I was just trying to. Yeah, I heard that. High school? Hmm. <laughs> I fall on you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> All right, kids, let's get back to what Matt we're supposed Sosa, to be doing. Matt Sosa <laughs> says, do you like movies about gladiators? <laughs> That's a whole grown man naked thing. Yeah. Sorry. Too funny. Anywho, where were we? What are you smoking, G? I am smoking a uh, 660 uh, La Flor Dominicana is what I'm smoking. Nice. Nice cigar. I just got these are the ones I ordered last week. They just came in. It's a um, pretty dark cigar. It is. It's full Maduro. It's a heavy cigar, real heavy cigar, but I love what it. What does that mean? You know, it's full Maduro. It. It's, uh, you know, the heaviest tobaccos, Maduro, full body. So it's, uh, it's a good cigar. I did the uh, history on it, uh, and I forgot to uh, add it to my phone. It's all the whispering over there. Oh, <laughs> shit. They're causing trouble. You guys, you, you go and you. Oh, it's the chicken cock. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Cheese man's going for the chicken cock. All right. All right. You can drink it. It's okay. It's good. It's very good. So, do we have any um, anything uh, to talk about with respect to the peerless distort? I do, I do. You, you, you want me to jump right Was into that? Was there anything else we wanted to cover? No, we, we've uh, we made assholes of ourselves yeah, already. Let's keep moving forward. It's kind of can I, uh, can I, I steal that Victor's bottle, please? Yes, you may. Thank you, sir. You got that? Victor's rye, straight rye. That's a nice one. That's just since we're at a rye night. Faves. 
I got it's it. It's Rye Night. Okay, so um, yeah, so we're we're talking uh, Peerless Small Batch Rye. So well, I guess. I'm sorry. No. I'm sorry. I apologize. I'm You're sorry. good. You're good. It's okay. So, <clears throat> Kentucky, it's it's made by Kentucky Peerless Distilling Company. Um, they began in Henderson, Kentucky in 1880s, and they were originally operated as the Worsham Distilling Company. Were you going to say something? No, no, no. You sure? Okay. Yeah. Um, so, Peerless Whiskey production, it really started to take off in 18, 1889 under Henry Craver. He made upgrades to the machinery, and he invested in more warehouses, and eventually became a U.S. federally bonded warehouse following the Bottled and Bond Act of 1897. Um, and they did that to kind of regulate what was going in the bourbons. I think we've talked about that a little oh, bit yeah. before, because they were pretty much just putting any garbage Tobacco, in there. Tobacco, juice. Iodine, yeah, all kinds no. of good, yummy <laughs> stuff. All kinds of, <clears throat> yeah, not good. Not good. Um, but when they did that, they it really... Um, boosted their production. They were doing eight barrels a day, and then once they became a federally bonded warehouse, they started, uh, they grew up to 200 barrels a day. Yeah. So, huge increase. Um, actually, during the Great Depression, though, the distillery pretty much shut down. Um, there's nothing much going on. And then in 2014, it was reborn. So, a uh, fifth generation family member from Henry Craver, fourth and fifth generation I should say Corky and Carson Taylor started restoration on the distillery um, what's pretty cool is they were able to obtain the original Kentucky distilled spirits connection spirit. established <laughs> all right I want to do a shot what what <laughs> <laughs> every time I have a misfire that's, that's my uh -oh. shot time um, anyway, so it, they were able to obtain the, the D, their original DSP number, uh, DSP 50, which represents the history and the legacy behind Peerless Bourbon. So I don't know if anybody really understands or knows what the DSP number is. So I started to dig into that a little bit. So I'm going to try not to be too long winded with this, but um, I know, right? Wake up. Uh, when, when Lincoln brought back the excise task tax... That's hard. Excise, Excise tax, tax yeah. on distilled spirits to help pay for the Civil War. The government started creating these bonded warehouses. Um, and these bonded warehouses came about because the whiskey was being produced. It had to become an aged spirit. And taxing spirits as it came off the still was unfair to the whiskey distillers who aged their products. So if the spirit was taxed right off the still, the distillers would be taxed for the spirits that were soaking into the barrel, evaporated into the air, which we call the angel's share. Um, so they didn't want to do that. They figured that was not fair. So with the creation of the warehouse, the government created a system of registering the distilled spirit producers, DSP. Uh, when they did this, the government broke each state into ta tax districts. Why can't I say that word? Tax or district? Yeah. Hold on, maybe I need a shot. Just mm. There you go. <laughs> so they broke each state into tax districts, and they mm -hmm. registered the distilleries in each district. So, if you take Kentucky for instance, the Kentucky the district started in the western part of the state, and then they moved east. And not every district district had a registered distillery. So only districts two, five, six, seven, and eight contained. Uh, registered distilleries pre-prohibition. Each district started with the DSP number one and then the numbers increased from there as the distilleries added on. So for example in the fifth district <coughs> Ferdinand Westheimer and Sons was DSP one fifth district Kentucky. Stolen Company Old Tar Distillery was DSP one in the seventh district. Um, so that so on. So um, after prohibition, they started making changes to the DSP numbers. Um, many distilleries, as we know, didn't weren't able to come back from prohibition. Um, so a lot of the DSP numbers were no longer in use. So the companies decided to change and go with a lower number, which I understand that it kind of means like you've been around for a while. Um, then in the twentieth century, so many distilleries closed. In 1990, there were only nine distilleries making whiskey in Kentucky. So Kentucky uh, changed all their districts from 
I don't know if they had eight or how many were there at the time, down yeah. to one. So there's only one uh, district now. So um, other distilleries, they just started naming their their DSP numbers and getting their their um, distillery number. They're up into the 20,000 now, the 20,000 range. Wow. Um, Peerless is DSP 50. So they were able to retain their original, their original. Yeah. DSP number. Um, and they were originally out of District 2 in Kentucky, if anyone cares. What what part of Kentucky? Did, did, was it like a Bardstown or somewhere like that? Uh, do, 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 do. Pro- you probably Henderson, Kentucky. Henderson, Kentucky. So western, western part of Okay. So just I- interesting. Um, and Scott Reutblatt, Snappa, Snappa. you um, actually a little while ago gave me the idea to talk about DSPs. So when I saw this on the the Peerless website, I decided to dig into a little bit and nice. finally talk about it. So um, let's see. I think I got through there. All right. So that's where I'm at. All right. So they they were out of business for a long time. And and then the two grandsons started up in the I think it's 2014. The two, they 2000, Yeah. Yep. So it, it's wow. you know, that's why that's why they don't have a lot of old wow. product at this point, but they they've done a lot um, in the distillery science side of it, particularly on the mash side, to really Get their uh, name on the maximize mash. that. Yeah. And so even though a lot of their product is not that old, that it definitely tastes, um, in my opinion, older than, than it is. In mo- at least everything I've tried. I've never had this rye before, so I'm looking oh, well, forward to trying I think, all, I don't think any of us have had it. Yeah. No, and that's, you know, I heard that too. It's only three years old, I think is what I read. It's a three-year-old, 108 proof. So 50, 54, a little over 54% ABV. Um, yeah, so 51% rye minimum. They don't disclose the actual blend. Uh, yeah, mash bill. Mash bill, bill so. Yeah. No, you're good. So, yeah, I'm sure it's a, I'm sure it's a bit over, I'm sure much more than 51%. <coughs> But uh, that's something we can try to judge as we, as we taste it. So. Yeah. Well, and, and a lot of the reading that I saw on this was they said it does taste a lot older than a three-year. Yeah. So um, I'm, there were some very good reviews on this that I caught online. So I'm kind of excited to try it. Awesome. Should I pass them out? Sure, why not? Let's right. do that. Unless you got something else. I ain't got nothing. I got nothing. Mm-hmm. One for you. Okay. One for me. I thought you were peeing. <laughs> I'm like, Doug, really? You couldn't wait? We could have taken a break. Dude, she told me I would have gave you a bucket. <laughs> I got to clean that shit up now. Georgia. No, just kidding. <clears throat> mm. Too funny. Okay, so the, the scroll is kind of slowed down, so everybody must have been hanging on to every word I said with the DSPs. They're all waking up. Wake up. Okay. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Mm. <laughs> Ooh, it's very I, dark. I can. As the first thing I noticed was the color, absolutely dark. I think it's probably like a four on the four char, char. I think. I, I don't would know. think so too. Well, yeah, and it, but again, remember, yeah, it could be more because it does. That's a three-year-old, so. So I, you uh, know, heavy. this couldn't. It, what I remember is that to be called a bourbon, you had to be aged for four years. So this isn't necessarily a bourbon. Well, no, a no. straight to be a straight bourbon or rye has to be two years. Two years, okay. Yeah, in in um, Virgin or Virgin American Oak Chard. Okay. So it is a bourbon. It's consistent. Nice legs are just starting out, but it's heavy. It's sweet. I think it's sweet smelling on the nose. <clears throat> Nice. Do you guys have any? Do you want any? Good. You sure? Yeah. We should have thought about this earlier. <laughs> we'll do. We'll do during the uh, the other show. So I get. I mean, I get definitely like I definitely can get the oak here, caramel and. Not a lot. No ethanol. I don't get any ethanol out of it. I get a tad. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If you really stick your nose in there and. 
Buff it. <laughs> this glass is only so big. Um, maybe a tad of green apple and then definitely yeah. um, some of the baking spice that is typical of a rye. Yeah, the it's more nice. I the very more pleasant. I nose it, the less sweet it becomes yeah, and the more spicy. The Absolutely. Very nice. I like nice. it. Maybe a little bit of like dark chocolate or something like that on there. There's definitely mm, something a little bit so candy like. Yeah, it's a candy. Yeah. I don't get a ton of fruit out of it, but I do get some. You want me to read what I yeah. found on yeah. the yeah. nose? What do you got? So it says it opens sweet with toasted oak. Caramel, spicy young rye, vanilla, faint green apples. Who said green apples? Doggy I dog. Uh, warm, earthy baking spices, red fruit, dark chocolate. Yeah. And barrel smoke emerge to give a complex and balanced nose. Very nice. <clears throat> yeah. I like it. All right. Should we go in? Let's taste Should this. we dive? Yeah. Let's do it, kids. Mm. Mm. Wow, that's real nice. Oh, I like that. Wow. What is that taste? It's got a long finish, man. You just get a it's little whiskey. bit. Of, yeah. No, but. I'm just kidding. <clears throat> no, what is that? It's spicy. Definitely spicy. Yeah, I mean, I, I part of that's a little bit of the high proof, but it's not. It's not badly burning or anything for 108 proof. Or said it, is I, I got a hint of strawberry. I don't know. Really? I get a little bit of well, some a little bit of light fruit, and then I get I definitely I get some more of those apples on the yep. palate. Yeah, me too. But I, I got that that quick that quick blast of strawberry. Caramelized sugar, a little mm -hmm. bit of sweetness, and um, maybe a little. It's done. On, uh, well, I don't know. We're gonna do finish separately, but I, we, I get we the could dark, do them together. I get the dark chocolate on the on the late and the, I don't on get the, the finish. I don't get the chocolate. I kind of get a little a little hint of it. Um, there's something there. I can't I can't put my finger on what it is. <clears throat> it's kind of earthy. Um, yeah, that's I, a little bit. Some I tannic, uh, mm. like charred oak in there for sure. I agree. But I like the finish. It comes off sweet. It does. Uh, but not cloying. With a little, that's what I, all I could describe as some dark chocolate. I will say for three years old, I do agree with everything I've read. It it does not taste like a three-year-old. Um, it tastes a lot older to me. What's the palate? Yeah. Uh, palate. Uh, the palate opens with tart green apple, caramelized and brown sugar, and earthy baking spices. Okay. Followed by a hefty kick of dry and young rye spice, dark chocolate, and slightly tannic charred oak. Maybe that's where I get the strawberry from. What's that? The uh, the dried oak, the tannic dry oak. Yeah. And there's light fruit in there that I can't quite put my finger on. It. You, you know, it could be strawberry. There's, I almost said a dark chocolate with raspberries or something. Could be. I get on the finish. See, this is where you guys have a lot more experienced palate than I do because I'm not pulling that out, but I do pull the earthy and I do pull the dark chocolate out of it. Yeah, I don't always get um, some of the flavors just because of the cigars that I smoke, so that has a big play in it too, but I do get a lot of, you know, I do get the apple, I, you know, I always get the caramel, the vanilla, the oak. You get the oak, but it's not dry. It's not dry at all. I think it's really good. No, it's yeah, not dry. I mean, what you just said segues into something that we'll talk about more after the show, but I want to do a future Whiskey Wizard on whiskey and cigar pairing. So awesome. We'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that. But um, when, uh, the whole science, yeast science wasn't as well understood and all those things. So you take a certain portion of the, the end of the distillation, you put it back in the fermentation tank, and that's called putting the set back in or the sour mash into the tank. And that helps control, raise the pH, helps control bacteria. So when they really didn't understand that science very well, it was an easy way to, uh, to make things work, to perpetuate right. the process. Um, but uh, so sweet mash it is really not putting that set back in. So what that does is gives you a lot more consistency a lot more 
I guess, intention and control as a distiller if you want to be really, um, really uh, deliberate about what you're doing. Uh, sweet mash is really a superior process. The downside is it takes a lot more control. Contamination can be a problem, so sanitation because you're at a lower pH, more friendly to bacteria. You have to be very careful that only the good bugs that you want are in the whiskey or in the mash doing their thing. Only the good what you call them? Good bugs, the good yeast, the good... Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, so, um, <laughs> I mean, in my opinion, I think ryes always tend to drink a little bit sweeter than wheats and uh, corn, so to say. Yeah. Now, if it, well, I mean, the profile for a rye is typically thought to be drier than a bourbon, but, um, you know, it's, it's uh, with this sweet mash process, it's... I mean, it's more terminology than meaning that it's actually sweet. Um, it just means they're not taking what they call the soured end of the distillation and throwing it back into the distilling tank. But um, so it takes a lot more control, and you got to really know what you're doing with your yeast and controlling your process to make sure that you don't get bacteria contamination, which will ruin the batch and create a bunch of off flavors. But when it's done right, um, what I understand and what Peerless claims that that makes it makes for a much better uh, fermentation and then what they try to do is you know you you have to be there's a there's a maximum proof you can put in the barrel which is somewhere around 125 proof so they shoot their distillation whereas a lot of other distillers will hot, distill a much higher proof and then they add water to lower it down to the 125 for for uh, putting it in the barrel so they shoot to get the distillation right above that 125 so they almost don't have to add water and also when you distill at that lower temperature or lower proof um, you you really retain more of the volatile compounds that you, the good things that you want that the yeast produce in the mash so that's why they claim they can get more flavor their whiskey can, can taste more mature at a younger age and all those kinds of is that like cheese? I don't know. We, we have a head <laughs> nod, yes. We have two head uh, nods two out there. <laughs> yes. Two guys that work at Burger King, they're telling mm -hmm. I'm just chucking. <laughs> they put the cheese on the burgers. <laughs> so Jennifer Boggs says she finds that a high rye is usually sweet, but the lower ryes are spicy. Yeah, I, to me a rye, that's part of a rye profile, is that dryness and that overall a little more spicy than a bourbon. Um, and all that but uh, yeah more of the kind of dark baking spices you know that you think of nutmeg cinnamon um, more of that the bourbons to me tend to have a lot more esters or more fruity a little more sweet but um, and that's what I'm getting the more spicy out of here I'm yeah. not getting the fruitiness I like it I like it yeah, but I do get that apple in there, that that green, yeah. that green apple. I get you. Really I, nice, get, I get apple too. But. Really nice, uh, really nice with all the other things going on here. So I, I think um, that, let's take. Uh, yeah. On that note, Pat Patterson has a question: Are they able okay. to adjust the pH at any time during the process? What kinds of acids or caustics do they use if they do adjust the pH? Um, no, they don't. I mean, they don't add any chemistry to the process per se, um, the setback tends to add, add um, you know, when you get to that, that the bottom of the distillation process and you put some of that back in there, and I forget the exact percentage that they put back in the mash, but that, that tends to raise the pH. Again, it makes it a little less prone to uh, bacterial contamination. So if you do a sweet mash, you just gotta have a lot more control of the process. But yeah, they don't add caustic or sulfuric acid to the tank to adjust the pH. <laughs> Nothing I like that not. going on. Yeah, yeah. That's so cool though, like the, the science of it behind, you know, yeah. it's like stuff you would never think of. Well, one of the reasons barley is used in almost every American whiskey too is because it, it, it has that <clears throat> enzyme in it that yeast need to really get going in, in a mash. So that's why almost every grain bill is going to have malted barley as part of it. Awesome. Very cool. Very nice. So anyway, it's Look about at is, you, it, is, it time, is it time to score these things? It is. 
I think it is. But I think we need to do a bottle cam first. Oh, oh do we need to do bottle it's cam? Time for okay. Bottle cam. Bottle everybody. cam coming up. Right. Coming up. Here we go. Hey everyone, it's time for the bottle cam. The bottle cam. <laughs> It's Pearl. It is not the wrong bottle. Oh, oh I, I'm sorry. I would have to do another shot if that were the case. Because God only knows how many you got in your glasses there that you're drinking. Um, oh my but gosh. before we go, I do want to say that Jennifer Boggs is now on Russell's Reserve Rye. Oh my goodness, <laughs> yeah. girl! Girl, you are on. You roll. go, girl. That's all I got to say. Um, your head and your ass can be hurt. Yeah, this up here. Way to go, Jen. Way to go. And G Money out there is smoking a big and beefy 570. Oh, oh my. Well, hey. Thank you, Greg. Thank you, Derek, for the lighter. Thank you very, very much. Oh my gosh, he was so happy. I he was will. like a little schoolgirl when That's he came it. home. He was Karen's like, like, let me see it. I'm like, it's not time for the show yet. You got to wait till I get out of the box. So. Yeah. What a dork. Oh, the dog is barking, so the it's time to do our scoring. It's time to oh, it's scoring. time to do scoring? Okay. All right. So uh, who wants to lead Big off G, this scoring? Say about this. I'm going with the 3 5, kids. 3 5. Not a lot of thought into that. Mm. You kind of just know right where you are on that one. Yep. Oh, gosh. Um, you know, I'm trying to compare this, and I know it's apples and oranges to the Balvini. Um, so I'm, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to back off of doing that. Um, I know, right? Jeopardy music. Um, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with a 3.75. 3.75. Somebody stop me. Go ahead. Um, I was thinking about changing mine because <clears throat> I picked the exact number I had. I did. So I, uh, well, I, I'm giving it 3.76. Everybody. Oh, <laughs> what is this? Price is right. <laughs> dun 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 dun. <laughs> Uh, anyway. No, I mean, I really like this. I really like this. It is. It's uh, very good. I can't put it quite in the four category. Um, Agree. But I'm happy, I'll be happy to have this on my, um, in my collection at any time. It's not a must have, but it's it's definitely a, a very worthy what's rye a, whiskey. What's, what's the bottle? How much? Um, oh, that is a good point. It is, I have to say that one thing about Peerless is it a bit pricey, um, you know, for comparative whiskeys. I think. This is in about the, um, it's certainly in the close to the $100 range. Is it really? Yeah, yeah I know. It's, it's like 80 it's, 90 bucks. It's, yeah. it's very expensive. Um, and Oh, look at that. It is, yeah. yes. But in my opinion, just my opinion, I think it drinks all of that money. My personal opinion. It's, um, it's darn close to it. Um, you know, you when I compare it with this, sure. I think I, I would rate this higher for sure. The... The Michter's? The Michter's uh, single barrel rye, but uh, in which is, I don't know what its MSRP is. You know, is. Uh, me and Kurt have had all of the Michter's rye, and um, we were not 100% fans. And then Wednesday, when it's we about were, an $80 right, yeah, or something. Yeah. Like, yeah. When, and then when we went to, uh, I wasn't a huge fan of the Michter's rye, and I don't think Kurt was either. But uh, when, for whatever reason, I don't know, maybe it was a different blend or what, you know, because I know that, you know, it changes. And uh, when I tried that uh, Michter's Rye on Wednesday, I was like, I couldn't, I couldn't believe I was drinking the same thing. Yep. Yeah, it really. was grassy. What's that? It was real grassy. The first was. time. Yeah, I had it, it um, I had it in the middle of last year for the first time, and I was just like, wow, I... Yeah, this is a four. It's 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 a one that I need to have. But we're not here talking about that. No, I understand, but, but I just you know comparison. Comparison. Yes. Yeah. Comparison. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. A, yeah. a good comparison. I'd still rate this a little higher, so I gave it a three seven three point seven six. Right. <laughs> just a little bit. Yeah, just, I mean we're very accurate just here a tip on the whiskey round table to the hundredths on our scoring system. Sure we are. So, yes, of course. Yeah. Oh yeah. Awesome. Anyway, so we did a lot of talk about rye today, and the yeah. Whiskey Wizard is going to take us right there, too. Yeah, right? let's do, uh, let's uh, let's see what the Whiskey Wizard has to say. About how long are we going to be? we got about six minutes six on the Whiskey Wizard today. All right, kids, we'll be right back. All right, hang tight. Whiskey Wizard! It's the Whiskey Wizard!
Hello and welcome to the Whiskey Wizard, where we say that whiskey making takes scientific knowledge, an artisan's skill and dedication, and a bit of the wizard's alchemy of light, air, earth, and fire. Okay, so tonight I want to talk more specifically about rye. I know we've included it in past discussions regarding American whiskey styles and industry trends. As the fastest growing product sector within American whiskey, I simply felt it deserved its own episode. In the U.S., rye whiskey is by law made from a mash of at least 51% rye. The other ingredients in the mash are usually corn and malted barley. It may be distilled to not more than 80% alcohol and aged in charred new oak barrels. The resulting whiskey must be put in barrels that not in excess of 125 proof or 62.5% ABV. Now, if the rye whiskey has been aged for at least two years and has not been mixed with other spirits or flavorings, it may be further designated as straight or as straight rye whiskey. Rye is one of a number of species of wild grain that grow in central and eastern Turkey and in adjacent areas. Archaeologists have found rye at a number of Neolithic sites in the Near East. Rye grows better than any other cereal on heavy clay in light, sandy, and infertile or drought-affected soils. And it's the only grain that can be cultivated in winter. Now it's grown in most regions of the Western world. Rye whiskey was historically the prevalent whiskey in the Northeastern states, especially Pennsylvania and Maryland. Western Pennsylvania was the center of rye whiskey production in the late 1700s and early 1800s. Recall our episode on the Whiskey Rebellion. Anyway, by the early 1800s, with Jefferson's repeal of the whiskey tax, Allegheny County, Pennsylvania farmers were soon selling one half barrel for each man, woman, and child in the country each year. Brands like Dad's Hat still hail from this region today. Rye whiskey as a style pretty much disappeared after Prohibition. Thankfully, brands like Old Overholt survived. Today, there are more brands and offerings than we can possibly list, and rye whiskey has been undergoing quite a renaissance in the United States, and as we just discussed in our industry recap, in Europe as well. A reconstructed distillery at Mount Vernon, the estate of George Washington, sells a rye that is fashioned as accurately as possible to the whiskey Washington actually made. It's quite expensive though. I was visiting Mount Vernon last November, and as much as I wanted to try it, I just couldn't pull the trigger. Interestingly, Washington's distillery was likely the largest producer of rye whiskey in the United States at the time, averaging well over 11,000 gallons annually. Rye grain is known for imparting what many call a spicy or soft fruity or cereal flavor to the whiskey. Bourbon, of course, must be distilled from at least 51% corn. Bourbon is noticeably sweeter and tends to be more full-bodied with a denser mouthfeel, I think. The whiskey sour, Manhattan, and Old Fashioned were cocktails originally made with rye. As bourbon gained popularity after Prohibition, it replaced rye in most of these concoctions. The character of these cocktails will be drier and less sweet with rye. And with the rebirth of cocktail culture, I think this is why rye is gaining in popularity again, as many drinkers prefer their refreshment less sweet, especially as cocktails tend to add a level of sweetness anyway, so it does provide a much better balance. Rye whiskey has seen significant growth in recent years, especially since 2009. According to Forbes, from that time, sales volumes have skyrocketed, rising up over 500%. I guess I'm happy to see more rye offerings, and I'm happy about the fact that the trend is likely to continue well into the late 20s. Personally, I like rye's drier quality, enjoy its profile with more cinnamon, cloves, and baking spices. Depending on the mash and distillation process, rye usually tends to provide just enough of the vanilla, caramel, and fruit esters that bourbon drinkers seek out. Some of my favorites include Michter's Single Barrel and Ten Year, Pikesville, Dad's Hat, Redemption Barrel Proof, and of course, Wild Turkey's Russell Reserve Six Year.
maybe as far as big growth, we'll enjoy seven more seasons of rye. Or perhaps there will be enough new product to fill seven seas of rye. Okay, sorry for getting a bit too mercurial. And I suppose I should make an effort to keep any such rye comments to myself. Okay, sorry for that. This is Douglas Dunbar, the Whiskey Wizard, for the Whiskey Roundtable. Cheers, Sanjo Ba. And now, back to the live show. I love that finish. That finish is just the best. It is so funny. So um, you were a bit punny in there with the whole uh, oh, Seven yeah. Seas of Rye. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Huh? Oh, yeah, sure. I, sure. I, I is that just... your favorite girl band, or what was it? <laughs> Queen, <laughs> come on. Queen, it Mercury. was Queen. I, was, I said, I just came up, I was writing the... So I was half right. I was writing it, and I, I said, you know, we'll, maybe we'll have at least seven more seasons of Rye, and then I thought of that song, The Seven Seas of Rye. Oh, awesome. But, but it's a different rye spelling. But. See, you get to mix your music love with yes, your whiskey yes, love, it's a, and it's a good thing. Yeah. Ta-da! Yeah. Yeah. No, that was that was great. And and you were talking about the Mount Vernon, and I thought when you were there, you actually tried it, but you, no, you weren't able. to I try had every that. intention to visit the George Washington Distillery and to uh, buy and taste some of the rye. I mean, his his actual original recipe, which they sell there in Mount Vernon and all the gift shops and everywhere uh, we they the the story wasn't open when we were there so we couldn't go see it but right uh, they had that for sale for everywhere and the little tiny bottle was like two hundred dollars 180 we changed but I just couldn't pull the trigger I hear you so it's really cool because when you mention that and I'm a big beer drinker so um, we went to in Philadelphia there's Yards Brewery and there is uh, the beers of the, or I'm sorry, the ales of the revolution. So they actually are able to take um, the, uh, you can't call it a mash bill in a beer, but the recipe that Jefferson yeah. mm -hmm. uh, did in, in his beer, yeah. but they had to tone it down because back in the day it was so much a stronger proof. So um, they toned it down a little bit, yeah, but they it really used, is uh, good. They kind of used the same yeast as you use for wine and champagne, so um, so it'll be more like what like a barley wine mm -hmm. today. So exactly. higher, that's know, what somebody said, yeah. barley wine. Yeah, it's safer that way. Yeah, it's safer. Uh, back as we talked about, remember we talked about that? Uh, they did that because water. Everybody drank alcohol in the late 18th century. What else was there to do? Well, there was no electricity. You couldn't drink the water. <laughs> they they, didn't, they didn't have, they didn't know about sanitation and water treatment, so uh, it wasn't safe to drink water, particularly in the, you know, kind of the city centers and large areas of population, so they drank alcohol. They drank beer, ale, and uh, whiskey. Mm -hmm. Awesome. My okay. kind of people. God bless yeah, yeah. So kind of people <laughs> so we had a very good question um during the break for the whiskey wizard jennifer boggs was asking us what is our favorite rye oh jeez so that Daniels. that's really I'll hard go because i know the answer to that for me it's the russell's reserve six a 4.8 no that was the that was the the single barrel select uh, okay uh, uh, bourbon i think okay yeah but uh, their Russell's Reserve six-year rye is the top of my list for rye. So. Yeah. Um, you know, it's hard, and I, it's hard for me to pick one because I really do like rye. I don't know if, um, what is it, the is it Angel's Envy or Eagle Rare rye that we had that we really liked? The, 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 Eagle, the Eagle, I'm sorry, Angel's Envy rye mm -hmm. is a fantastic rye. And, and I was thinking about that, but then somebody out here said Jack Daniels rested Jack Daniels rye. Rusted oh my God, yes. And well, I, might, um, I think yeah, I, I think it to, just pushed that out of the way. So I, I think I'm going to go with the Jack Daniels. That one I have to, yeah. Now I have to say, I mean, I, I guess I was scoring readily av available and obtainable rye when I said the Russell's Reserve Six. Mm -hmm. That Jack Daniels rested rye that Greg let me taste. <laughs> that you can't, you're not going to be able to go out and buy that. That is probably the best rye I've ever had. 
Thank you. And those Helen they, Keller pick. Yeah. And I when, got when it. we talked about Jack Daniels, their premium products, uh, you know, we you know we may not like number seven and. Right. That's think of that as just kind of a regular bar. According whiskey. to our blind taste test, but yeah, I mean, it was an experimental <laughs> taste thing. Taste those uh, those more specialty releases that Jack Daniels have, and, and in my right. opinion, they're all excellent. So. They're, they are very good. The problem um, is they don't make that anymore. Well, right? yeah, you can if you find it, it's five hundred dollars a bottle. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, but it was it was. I stocked up. That's that probably the best <laughs> rye I've ever had. For of course sure. you did. I stocked up. <laughs> so, uh, Greg, your favorite ride, what would you say? Well, so, so Doug, Doug hit them all. He hit, uh, you know, Angel's Envy Rye, uh, Jack Daniel's Rye, and uh, um, uh, Russell's. Russell's Reserve Rye. Good. Well, there's, this, two, there's, this, there's two this, different this, Russell Rye's. This is probably, so, this is in my top five rye. Yeah. And, and Mictor's sure. is, is, is good, too. But, I'm, yeah. uh, you know, I'm going for yeah. my, my, my best to the last, so to say. So, mm -hmm. Jack Daniel's, Angel's Envy. You know, and and uh, Russell's Reserve, and the, they're all all uh, all good products, man. Yes, so so Jennifer's asking, what about that Kentucky Owl Rye, Doug? I um, just uh, <laughs> Emma Emma uh, uh. No, honestly, that's something it, else that you you can't. No, she, depending on the batch, that, you can't get any. I, I think I just had a little one, bit one time that out. night, um, and then after probably sampling, you know. 15 whiskeys so I didn't really I can't I couldn't rate it accurately and then uh, I gave it to Cameron to because I knew that he Lauren would like it and so I let him take it home with him after that visit so nice and Cameron is saying that Russell's six is yeah yeah that's that's a really nice yeah the uh, the, the, the ride that the uh, Russell's reserved that Kurt had he didn't like it as much but that was the first rye, there, we have both ryes here, so which is very very good. Yeah. So what no, we got, great kids? great great question. Yeah. Um, what do yeah. we got? Do we, we have any audience questions here on the whiskey roundtable? That's right. Um, do we have any news tonight? I guys? did not. I did not do any news today. Sorry, kids. Okay, so Middleton, very rare. Um, they. Irish. Iris Distillers announced the launch of Middleton Very Rare 2021, the latest edition in their brand's annual series. And this year's uh, is the first to bear the signature of master distiller Kevin O'Gorman, who took over the role from Brian Nation in 2020. And um, other news, the, the new, gu new guidelines have finally been established for Japanese whiskey. Um, that happened this week, or last week actually now, the Japan Spirits and Liqueurs Makers Association issued new guidelines on the production and labeling of Japanese whiskey, which heretofore there had been no rules pertaining to Japanese whiskey. A lot of it had been actually made in parts of <coughs> Scotland and Canada, so uh, the, the new proposed rules basically say that raw ingredients must be limited to malted grains, other cereal grains, and water extracted in Japan. Malted grains must always be used. So, um, no, that increase? tells you what they're planning to make in Japan. No, Sacrif that's fireball. Sacrification, fermentation, and distillation must be carried out <coughs> in a distillery in Japan, and the alcohol content at the time of distillation must be less than 95%. Okay, no problem there. Um, the aging of the distilled product must be poured into wooden casks not exceeding a capacity of 700 liters and matured in Japan for a period of at least three years thereafter. Um, Can I backtrack for a second? Yeah, yeah. Well, so earlier in the show, we, we always ask what's everybody drinking, and, and this is my bad because, you know, obviously I can't pick up certain things. <coughs> um, but Falbio said he's drinking a Brookladdick. Dick. Whoa, hey. Whoa. Brooke Lottie. Brooke Lottie, the same that Jimmy. Oh, Brooke Lottie? <laughs> and, and he said Kurt's drinking a mad dog. Ouch. <laughs> Is that a black dick? Grape yeah, kind? Grape. <laughs> because we all had grape mad dog, or didn't orange, we, back in the 80s? Jubilee. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, I got so <laughs> sick on grape mad dog. Midnight for my fraternity, my first order was to drink an entire bottle of mad dog 2020. Oh my god. How'd that work out for you? Uh, it wasn't a fun night. Let me Amen. Tell you. 
Amen. Or, or Does a, anyone have a good Mad Dog 2029? Very, very not fun Survive. next day and yeah. day after that. Let me tell you. He lost a whole week. I lost a <laughs> couple of days. Yeah. Too, Too funny. funny. I agree. I'm sorry. I didn't want to interrupt you, but I wanted to call a shout out to. Yeah, it's like when I went on my whiskey diet. <laughs> you went on your whiskey diet? Well, actually, it started this week. It started this week. <laughs> just, I saw. I have the picture. So less than a week, and I've already lost three days. Cameron says he loves brew your dick. What do you call it? Brooklyn. Cameron, who knew? <laughs> hey, don't tell Lauren. Brooklyn. <laughs> what do you call that? Brooklyn. And that's not how it's spelled. I know. It's Gaelic. <laughs> nothing. Nothing. Hold that bottle up so we can read it there. Yep. Big Dick, Brooke that's Lottie. what it was. Oh, oh the classic Lottie. Yeah, <laughs> okay, the other thing that the Japanese uh, uh, proposed regulations say, the aging, uh, we talked about that, three years, um, no, no more than 700 liter container of, in oak, and the bottling must take place only in Japan with an alcoholic strength of at least 40%, and we're all in favor of that. Only alcoholics mm -hmm. in Japan? What did you say? No, alcoholic strength of at least 40%, as of such time so in other words they're they, they've got it's a standard now and if it's if it says japanese whiskey we know what that means so that's a good thing that's a good thing for the industry port Eskeg 12 year spring edition bottle in 2020 has just been released uh mary single malt from an undisclosed isla distillery which was distilled in 2006 and 2007 aged for 12 years a total of 12 of 18 ex bourbon hogsheads were used in its creation bottle in 2020 and uh you know it's a port askeg port of skag what port skags and dicks oh my now what are we talking about <laughs> well <laughs> look it says <laughs> i'm to those i love the story so um you guys you guys know my favorite distillery on is on iowa mm -hmm. and it's uh it's it's close to port askeg and it happens to be the cool Isla distillery. So maybe that could be the undisclosed Isla distillery, which is making Never. Port Eskeg 12 year. And they also have a spring and an autumn edition. So uh, I find that exciting. Maybe something I will seek out. Buffalo Trace, uh, Greg, Buffalo Trace was named the American Distiller of the Year by Whiskey Magazine. Whoop, whoop. Uh, oh yeah, so that's, you know, that's where some. <laughs> Way to go, Buffalo Trace. Okay. And Isla Bay. Uh, Did you say Isla? Isla. A I L S. Ilsa. I don't, don't listen to her. Just tell your story. Scottish. <laughs> Ilsa. 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 Let's call no, it Ilsa. William Grantson's announced the official launch of Ilsa Bay, a new peated single malt from their Lowland distillery. Jimmy, that rules it out. Yeah. Uh, based in the town of Girvan, it's uh, first release. It's their first release from the story, uh, which was founded in 2007. So a new uh, single malt is appearing on the market, Isle Bay. Okay, it's a testament to our whiskey making expertise and the skills of our master blender Brian Kinsman. They say so. Um, uh, here's one for Dan Ruth and Yock has just released a new tailored malt. The Highland single malt brand, Anyok, which is produced by Knock Du, uh, has announced the expression featuring collaboration with highly regarded Seville Row designer, Patrick Grant. The whiskey is named Blas, which translates from, ga from Gaelic to as taste. It's been matured in a combination of American oak and Spanish oak cast. Not ex uh, court or Madeira cast, but just Spanish oak, so that's don't see that a lot so nope. it's interesting absolutely okay now uh the john barleycorn awards 2020 so they're kind of trying to become the academy awards of the whiskey industry so um the best bourbon everybody um the best bourbon was four roses small batch which right. we covered like two shows ago yes. right yes, on our, we did. Absolutely. Um, our uh, Valentine's edition. Nobody liked it because it was empty ones. Well, yeah, I mean, and, and I was just pulling up our scores. I mean, they were right there. 3-2, three, 3-3, two, three, 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 four. Um, Those were our scores, which are but solid scores. They're solid scores, but are they scores that are worthy of the best bourbon? Mm. I don't 
don't know. But that's uh, that was rated the best bourbon. And then uh, the best rye was New Riff Balboa rye. With ah. Rye. Gee, how many bottles do you have? I don't have any. Oh. I have a lot of New Riff, but I do not. I have a lot of special picks and all that blends. But I don't. I don't have that. You don't have the Balboa. The Balboa. So maybe Balboa. that's one that we might want to check out. All right. And uh, the best American whiskey was the Uncle Nearest 1856 Premium Aged Whiskey. You know, I've seen that uh, at Uncle, the Uncle store. Nearest Whiskeys, uh, there's a great story behind that, and I've talked about this in the past of the show, not to keep the show long. Uh, but uh, he's the one who taught originally for Jack Daniels. Really? Yeah. So there's a whole that we should, I'm going to grab a bottle of Uncle Nurse. It's not it's not super expensive. It's like 50, 60 bucks a bottle, and uh, we'll do a show on that. So let's hold that that, that information. That reminds up. me that there I want to do a wizard on the. Uh, there was that. an article, a show on Channel Three about that. Uncle Nurse. Yeah. 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 It's 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 great Same history. Thing. It's a great backstory. Yeah, it's a great story. Yeah. Well, we'll have to talk about that one. Okay. And we're gonna we'll do the. Uh, that kind of the family tree of uh, American whiskey. That there you is go. So uh, we've awesome. never really. I need to do that as a formal whiskey wizard. So. Uh, that's going to be yeah. a long. So why, why, don't, why don't we wizard. do? Yeah. Why don't we? Why don't we pencil that in for April? Yeah. Well. Yeah. I got a. I got a certain production schedule, but we'll. Okay. We'll see what we can do. Uh, so right. We'll try to get that. Try to get that done. Uh, that's why you're the wizard. Uh, yeah. Exactly. I know we're booked. But so anyway. the best American single malt. <laughs> we're way booked. And we talk about that as a growing category. Um, <laughs> In uh, American whiskeys, the best American single malt was Courage and Conviction. I've never heard of that. No, have I you mean, guys? I guess I guess because of that, we're just gonna have to try one of those. Maybe this one would be a good one to try in that category. Okay. Of American single malts. All right, sounds good uh, to me. The best world whiskey, Cotswolds Sherry Cask Single Malt. Hmm. In um, Cotswolds, I'm not, I think that's British. It's not even a Scottish single malt, but it's a, it's a British single malt. Uh, when Cameron and I did our, our um, advent calendar tasting, I think we had a British um, whiskey in there that was outstanding. So. Awesome. Okay. Any, well, that, any, uh, any closing quotes, sir? Well, first of all, let's thank everybody for watching. If and you're here with for us audience. and our, our live audience, yeah, <laughs> thanks for being here in the live audience. The worst audience we have ever had. <laughs> so yeah. let's just hear, how loud can the, the live audience applaud if we. Yay! Yeah. 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 Oh, oh, all right. Oh. Almost, as, almost as good as my camera. Not bad for two people. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, but uh, if you can't watch, if you didn't yeah. watch us live, uh, ho hopefully you're watching us uh, later on. If you have any uh, questions, uh, comments, let us let us know. Uh, if you want to be a guest on the show or you have comments, um, comment on Facebook or email us directly at the Whiskey Roundtable at gmail.com. Uh, closing quote. Okay. You ready? Yep. Hit it. Okay, well, hum Humphrey Bogart's last words were, I should never have switched from scotch to martinis. His very last words. Really? Oh, wow. yes. All right. I want to say thank you again to uh, Greg and Derek for the lighter. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Oh, he's so it. happy I you don't it. know. Absolutely love it. Yeah. And, uh, you know, thanks to Dave, Dave Sham Samrock for yep. the Entertaining great us. time we had sure. Wednesday night at the Royal Havana Cigar Lounge. That I think Dave fantastic. will be here tomorrow. Cool. Nice. I think Dave and the Rev will be here tomorrow. We got a game to play tomorrow, kids. Oh. oh. Cards Against Humanity. Better uh, than strip poker. Yeah. <laughs> That's what she said. It's what it's called. I cannot wait to play that game. All right. Call us out. Let's get out of here. Let's do it. You call us out every week. All right. Too. Thank you very much for uh, watching the show, and uh, we we'll hope to see you next week. And uh, we'll see you soon, kids. Have a safe weekend. Be careful. Yeah. Big G. Karen Helen Keller. Doug Dunbar. Be safe, all. So long, everybody. Have a great week. We'll see you next week. You got it. Hasta Winnebago. If whiskey stopped working, every bar in town would be closing their doors, shutting down. Everybody would be trapped with their thoughts, because nothing else would pay like bourbon or scotch. Oh, no. Oh, no, no. Stop to work in where the hell would I be? Probably wasting lots of money trying therapy. 
It's whiskey, whiskey stopped working What the hell would I do? Honestly to tell you the truth I wouldn't be over you whiskey stopped working If 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 whiskey stopped working Poor Jack D would be out of a job Jameson and Bean would be cut off Hank Williams songs wouldn't make any sense Yeah, this whole damn world would be a mess Oh yeah Oh yeah, yeah If whiskey, whiskey stopped working Where the hell would I be? Probably wasting lots of money What the hell would I do? Honestly, to tell you the truth, I wouldn't be over you. Whiskey stopped working. If whiskey stopped working. Oh. Whiskey stopped working. If whiskey stopped working. Oh. Whiskey stopped working. If whiskey stopped working. Oh. If whiskey, whiskey stopped working, where the hell would I be? Probably. Way out of this town, leaving Tennessee.